So my name is Scott, Scott Proposky. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. So if I have a slight Boston accent, uh, just raise your hand and I'll speak a little bit slower. How's that sound? You're a Yankee fan, so it's okay. That's right, that's right. And I will be at Fenway Park on Tuesday at a game. Um, so, so what I've created about 13 years ago was a company called Photos in a Minute. And I actually grabbed the website and the username, username, our URL, as they say, about 15 years ago and had a foresight of what I wanted to do to print photos on, on site. Um, before a lot of it was really going on. So before all this happened, uh, die sub technology was just in play in the year probably early, late 1990s, okay? And most of these printers on site, just to give you an idea of, of where these printers are and, and, and the mind boggling where they are today, in the year 1999, 98, give or take a few years, um, you could buy an eight by 10 printer and you could spend about $10,000 on a printer, okay? Uh, so what did I do? I bought two. And, and that was just for the 8x10. And of course, of course, if you wanted to print 5x7 and 4x6, you need another $8,500 for another printer. And of course, I bought four, right? Of course, right? And then you needed special software to print because you, you didn't have, you know, we only had Windows, right? We didn't have certain drivers and certain software to be able to print and print fast and print a photo in a minute, right? So I had to buy special software. And of course, how much was that software? Yeah, ten thousand dollars. That's right. That's right. And and of course, we needed digital cameras because we're all pre we're all we're all taking photos digitally, right? And the year is 1999, 98, and you needed you need a high-end digital camera. And of course. You don't go to a job with one camera, right? Do we? No, of course not, right? So I bought my original D1, and, and I think most of the people in this room think back in 1991, uh, 1998, how much was a Nikon D1? $10,000? Yeah, no, just body only. So you had that lens. Another $10,000, okay? So, and of course, I bought two. Right. So the years moving on, 1999, 2000s happening. We've we've started a company called Photos in a Minute. I purchased just about enough equipment right here on this table for just well under a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So it seemed like a bargain to me. I didn't even flinch. I bought it. Money was a little bit more easier than it is today. You sign a little lease agreement, little pieces of paperwork, get a little fax, fax it over to them. Of course, we didn't email it, right? So we faxed it over to them, and we were able to get, you know, ninety-five thousand dollars and put five thousand dollars down. And I had a company called Photos in a Minute in the year nineteen ninety-eight. Okay, what did I do with that? All this equipment piled in my basement, <laughs> in my garage, out of the boxes, trying to figure it out. Well, what I did is I ran to New York City. I tried to get the biggest client I could find. And I knew I could print eight by 10 photos, magazine style, to magazines, not just small venues. So what I did is I went to Warner Brothers and worked on the Harry Potter premiere. Said I could print five by seven photos in a minute because Harry Potter had this school theme going on, right? So it was like Harry Potter can go to, you know, for the premiere in New York City. They call photos in a minute. We printed photos out for Harry Potter for the premiere. And then once I did that, then I moved on and I went right to National Geographic. And I was doing some events. And I walked, I called them up, got into the door, drove to Washington, D.C., got into the door, and sat down with National Geographic and told them what I could do. I was on the road for, for quite a few years doing photos for National Geographic, going to events promoting their products like nobody else has, ha has has done. I was printing eight by 10 photos and putting people's in the cover of the magazine of National Geographic. They would go to trade shows to get subscriptions for magazines to, to, to sign up for the magazine. People weren't signing up for the magazines. They'd go to these trade shows. If you filled out a little survey with your name on it and you actually signed up for a one year subscription, you got yourself on a front cover of National Geographic magazine. With your choice of different backgrounds, of course, right? because you traveled, right? And we all printed that in a minute. And we all did that using dye sub printers. And we would travel to these trade shows and print some of those photos. So let me just fliply go through a couple of them here. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, one, of my, one of my all time favorites. So as we were at the events, we were printing photos, in, very similar to this, we were printing photos with two keystrokes of a button 
to actually print and have software driven to print photos as quick as we just did right now. Oh, it's a lot faster now. It's a lot faster now. Actually, you, you, no, you're right. I mean, 1999, when we bought, when we had 8x10 printers, you needed two or even four for a reason. And the reason being is most of them printed about three minutes, three and a half minutes. Now, if you turn lamination off, you could save another 15 seconds, which is really kind of important on time. That was a big deal. 15 seconds when you had a lot of people outside the convention center in National Geographic. So we'd have a stack of printers to print photos of. Photos. Photos in a minute, right? By the way, don't even think about it. I did grab the word URL photos in a second. So we do have that as well. So we had to do that. So, so these printers, they, you would have to have three, three or four printers to print fast and quickly because 8x10s would print in about three minutes, okay? So as we go on through this technology in, in trying to sh ship these printers, you know, making sure that buying the paper, buying the media, media because paper and media, as we call media, on like maybe some of the inkjet printers, dye some printers use a different, if you're familiar with it or not, it's not ink cartridges and, and sheets of paper, okay? With dye sub, it's a lot different. And even still today, I did an event for Dunkin' Donuts over the weekend, and it's amazed me what well, many people will say, where does the ink go? Where do you put the ink? Do I have this color ink, that color ink? And, that, and that's where it gets a little, the, you know, the, this is almost like the secret in the sauce of why this works so well, okay? This isn't something that was just developed, you know, like the iPhone a few years ago. Dye sub technology has been around for, for a while. It was used in the medical fields many years ago. And, and we've used that technology for imaging, for photography, and print quickly on demand, okay? So when we're at events, we'll have, and Todd can show you, we have, we'll have a roll. We'll have a whole roll of paper, and we'll have a ribbon. And the paper will match the ribbon, okay? So a lot of times, if the ribbon goes this way, thank you for showing up. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, you'll have the ribbon and you'll have the roll of paper. And if, if they're not together and you, you swap them because maybe you move in printers and change it, they're not gonna line up. So when you use paper, you use the exact same ribbon. So let me show you a little bit about the workflow, a little bit some more samples of what you can do with some of the different vents. We talked about going to magazines, magazine styles for 8x10s, and that's the reason why you, you may want to print 8x10s. Another good reason is, is maybe, maybe a lot of you are, oh, let me show you this, I've randomly seen some photos. You know, I ran over to Sports Illustrated and printed photos. And this was all using green screen technology, by the way. So we had a green background. We're all familiar with that, right? Green, we had a green screen background. We had some studios set up. We were tethered to our, our laptop using Doc Room software or Express Digital, some of the different names of these software companies that are out there. And we're taking photos. We're tethered. It's popping up into the software that you're seeing right here. Uh, we can make some adjustments to a lot of green screen. A lot of people are a little afraid of using green screen because of some of the tools and the software and how to do that. A lot of these softwares right out of the box. We'll print that photo. This is 20 bucks right there. <laughs> it's a dot, well, dot our cause, but we're selling it for 20 maybe, right? So, so um, what I want to talk about, we talked about event photography printing and using these printers and using software on site, but maybe there's some people in this room that do portraits, portrait photos, right? How many people do portrait photos, right? How many people would like to do a portrait and maybe print that portrait for that customer that day without going anywhere else? Or maybe taking one of the DMP bags and going on site and actually printing those eight by tens for that order for that client right there. Maybe they're all like, you know, they're all, they're all in the mode, right? The photos look fantastic. So this is something that I did the other day. This is a friend of mine. So I, we went to a great spot and like you guys probably have your great spots and did, and did some photos, right? So you can take some photos, PC, Mac, whatever, whatever you want to use, it's your choice. Maybe Lightroom, maybe Dark Room. I use Dark Room. Um, and you can actually take photos and, and, and take an order and, and actually print those eight by 10 photos. And maybe package print and have, have you know, those family photos that the whole family's there, right? And, and you're taking orders for eight by 10s for all the families and you, you, you got this little 
iPad, digital paper, writing it on a napkin for orders, whatever you need to do to, you know, to, to get orders and, and have a whole family and everybody together. The power, the power of that is, you know, will people actually go online to actually order those photos? In most cases, they drop out quite a bit, right? So a lot of people have that experience. So, so I know I've talked, whoops. I know I've, I shouldn't take the picture. So I mean, I wanted to pass this around. The reason why I printed this, this was, this was taken the other day if you want to pass it around there. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, and um, you can, you know, take a look at the quality of print, dissect technology, print a portrait, and, and using that, you, you know, really use, utilizing this technology besides, you know, I don't want to oversell it and say you need to be at National Geographic or Sports Illustrated to do events. Um, you could do great portraits and, and business profiles. Headshots are very big right now. Everybody that you talk to needs a headshot. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what we can do is we can, so in our, in our, in our software package, I, mean, I won't run through the software, but you can pretty much get it where you can actually print out, and also oh, let me show you. So um, package printing is a really big deal, right? You want to make sure you can print 8x10, 5x7, full wallets, and you, you don't want to do a bunch of cropping, right? You, don't, you, you know, like, can I have an 8x10 and then a 5x7? You're like, oh, it's a 5x7, I got to change the crop. It's a, it's, a, it's a problem, right? We all know that, right? So, I mean, you can set up your package printing. Now, I'm just showing you, everybody can see the screen here. And, you know, this is darkroom software, so there's other, there's other ones out there, but it seems to make uh, a lot of money for me. So I kind of like it. So 8x10. So here's our 8x10. We're going to add a second package to this program. So when we're at event, we don't have to, like, try to figure out how we're going to print. We want to make things simple. We're photos in a minute. We have to be simple, right? So you can predefine these packages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group. I'll just call it two, say OK. There's no cost. You can keep track of some costs in there, depending upon how far you guys want to go with this, OK? And so package number two, maybe, maybe it will be um, doo -doo -doo. Um, so we, we are what? We are an 8x10 printer, right? So we'll list all our, all our available options. So if we had DMP40, which prints 6x8 me media, we could print 6x8s, two 4x6s, maybe a 5x7 on a 6x8 sheet. So now, you're not, you know, now you can buy one roll of paper, a six, a, 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 a one roll of paper, you've got a little bit of options there, right? You can print 5x7. You know, a lot of jobs, a lot of people printing 4x6s, you can print two, two 4x6s and always stay with one inventory of paper. You're not like, you know, I got my 8x10, I got my 4x6 paper here, I got my 8x10 paper. You just buy one box, okay? Um, it's kind of nice to do that, right? Um, or if you bought a DMP80, which is the same footprint as the 40, you can now print 8x10s, but in that 8x10, that eight inch, the paper's eight inches, you, you can package and select packages. So you still have the capabilities of printing two five by sevens, right? So by having an 80, you, you can do that. Um, so let's do this. So eight by tens, right? So let's go to some packages. So let's say we want to print, uh, let's do, let's do something like a little crazy here, a bunch of little photos, right? Just, just for example, right? So then we'll go to our, our photo workshop. There's our package two. We're going to hit how many do we want? Hopefully they bought about a hundred of them for our clients, right? But we'll just hit one. Um, and then we can place our order and, and print those packages. Um, what's really kind of interesting in package printing on, on different software, I know this particular software, Express Digital, or Darkroom as they call it today, if you have an 8x10 printer and you want to print two 5x7s, it'll actually cut the paper for you. So it, it'll actually have that 5x7 out there. It will have, it will have that. If you have a DMP40, which is the six by, six by eight printer, it'll print the four by six photos for you. So you, if you're on an event, you gotta print four by sixes, you don't really, you don't have to go out there with a pair of scissors to, um, to uh, no, this is just a random package to show the package printing and how quick you could print those packages, okay? How many people do do portraits and would like to print on, on do, do you want me to spend a little bit more time on how you can actually do that? And, so, so with, with some of the, there's a couple of different ways to, to make, you know, we all, again, we're all here to make money, right? So, so there's a couple of different ways that I would do it if I was at, let's, let's, let's create a, a scenario. Let's say we're doing a family photos, okay? 
and we have seven sets of families, okay? And we want to, we don't want to just get paid a small fee to take the photos, uh, and we don't want to spend a lot of time editing the photos. And I know a lot of people have spent a lot of time processing and editing photos. And they forget about that, but that's actually taking their time up. Because that's taking your brain power. If you actually get to spend the day and, and take photos and spend a whole another day to edit those photos and then spend another day to meet the client to actually order the photos, because you know they're going to cancel once or twice when you meet them at Starbucks, right? Nobody ever shows up, right? They're going to cancel, right? So, so if, you can, if you can just remove all that, take your photos, bring it into some software on site, and, and, you know, and you know, hey, listen, all photos need to be touched up. There's always some kind of tweaking going on, right? Who's taking a perfect photo every time? You did? <laughs> Besides myself, there is somebody else in the room. That's great. Um, with special software, very easily, and it has to be easy because you're under that, you know, how many times things work always well in the office or your home office or just before you leave. It, everything, it always works perfect. But as soon as you get outside the environment and you got about 10 different things and clowns out there and people juggling and the kids screaming and everything going on, you, can, you almost can't think, and I'm not even kidding you, I've been doing this for, I got a gray hair, I've been doing this for a long time, okay? So with the software, you can actually change the way, you know, if you need to change some exposures, if you need to, you know, the shadows and the, and the color, or, or maybe, you know, a lot of times, you know, make it in black and white. Or maybe create different borders, move it around quickly. Um, zoom in, you know, make, make that perfect photo. Maybe we, you know, we talked about, you know, what size this needs to be. Maybe this needs to be set up for uh, a five by seven, so that we just did, right? Um, so now we're printing two five by sevens on a sheet. Zoom out there. We can zoom out, right? We can do all this stuff. We can add, um, let's move this down. So that's our five by seven. How many people are still using vignettes? Have you, anybody, anybody using a vignette around a photo to use the studio? Is that out in? Well, I'm. Is it in? Dark. I'm bringing it back myself, too. So you, there you go. Yeah. So now we can do a medium in there. We bring it down. Let's, let's just, you know, let's make this perfect. Bring that down. So we're creating a five by seven portrait here, a black and white, little vignettes. Um, a lot of times with black and whites, as we all know, you gotta add a little contrast to take it out, right? Make it pop a little bit. And then the shadows, we're doing this real quick, right? So gonna change this a little bit. There we go. And let's bring this up a little bit. And maybe the brightness. And I know a lot of people like to, um, a little soft focus maybe, right? Real quick, maybe, maybe too much. But for an example, and uh, let's make this an eight by 10 because we're gonna make a full eight by 10 so we can actually see it, right? So we're gonna, that's a five by seven format. So the customer just changed their mind. Oh, can I get an eight by 10, right? So we can make those adjustments. And you have a process involved, maybe an order form, a simple order form to, to, to set up what you're gonna offer. A little check off sheet. You know, hopefully everybody's there with their checkbooks and pens and pencils, right? And you're set up just like you are here. And you're actually, you're actually printing those photos. And uh, there we go. Great. See what that looks like in a moment. I tell you, just, just recently, um, I used to do a lot of school photos and print school photos. And I sold that business uh, about a year and a half ago. And I'm not gonna lie, I used to use a different printer to print photos. <laughs> a big lab, again, this must be out of, don't, don't, create the, don't create the photography, yeah, this is just a sample of photos. I think it's a little too soft, I can actually print another one. Um, I, in fact, I will. Okay, so let's print that right there. So, so a few years ago, I was doing a lot of school photos. We had about 20, 25 accounts of printing school photos, and a lot of people will send it to a lab, or maybe they'll have the big lab. We, we happen to have a, a larger lab in our office. It was called the dry lab to print photos. I sold the business a year and a half ago because it was getting a little, little bit out of control. I was traveling a lot, with doing events around the country, uh, as well as school photos and baseball photos and all those great lucrative jobs that we all hear about that nobody ever gets. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who's doing any team photos or any, anybody doing teams or schools or, or any, ever thought about it? Because it, it's, actu it's actually at a great time that you can get into it. And a lot of, a lot of people haven't gotten into it because it, you, you, it was so difficult to print photos. And you had to send to a lab, you had to organize it. Well, right now there's a lot, there's a lot of preschools, a lot of small schools that are out, okay? And to the point where you can go into a school and, and offer photos, come back, to your, come back to your house, right? Take those school photos in portraits, just like this. This might be a corporate headshot, but you can go to school and you got 100 little potential customers over there at a school and, and, and print photos at the school, you know, take photos at school, and then come on back and using technology like this, and you have your full studio lab right here. You, you, you're printing in your bedroom, you're printing in your garage, and you can take your orders, you can have your packages that people ordered, create those different packages, add those vignettes, as we just found out, black vignette is in, right? Yeah. It's in. So add that to all the packages. With, we talked about cost per print. Cost per print is a dollar for an eight by 10 unit, right? Now, I think we've all purchased some school pictures before, right? I think most of us uh, are familiar with unit, units of school picture packages. Where are they ranging? 10, 15, $20, is that right? Is anybody, who's with me? Who's with me, yeah. right? So $20, dollar for that piece of paper, we talked about that dollar. Pretty high margins, I think, right? To do photos. So these are just some of the ideas of being events. It doesn't need to be green screen studios, National Geographic, Harry Potter, all these, all these great events, which are, they are great. But there's other reasons why to actually print these photos and print it this way and using the right software and, and printing photos. Because the inkjet and printing, if you go to school with 50 kids and they all ought to pitch photos, Maybe they have three units per package. So that could be about 300 photos, 308 by 10s, right? So that's two, that's two rolls of media. That, so you're purchasing two rolls of media from B&H Photo. Uh, they're showing up at your home, free shipping, of course. And um, tell them I'm not home. I'm not here. Um, and you could buy two rolls, two rolls of paper and, and be your own lab. And, and maybe print them that night and deliver them to your schools the next day. Um, I think you, you pay enough, you, you, you pay enough, to the printer, the paper, uh, and enough to at least go out and get a nice dinner that day and you, you'd have your business actually paid for with one job, okay? Um, Todd, you wanna add something more? We, what we, that was more about events and printing on site. What we wanna do next is, is just show you another way to make money and you, utilizing technology at events. And uh, DMP has this uh, phenomenal software that I'll, I'll kind of go into a little bit of what I've done, okay? And kind of a little bit outside the box. I tell them I'm not home. Okay, no problem. Um, you good? iPhone? It's on the side, huh? There you go. You want me to do it? You got it? No, right here. Oh, you got to take this off right here, right? So, oops, oh, hold on. You have one good case. So take this off like that. Say, pop that off, right? Yeah, there you go, you all set. Okay. Yeah, you're good to go. Great. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. So, so there's, a, there's a new software out. Well, we, it's fair to say it's new, right? Right, Tom? It's new software. Um, it's called uh, Mobile Potty Print. Okay, it's by DMP. Um, it, I was, is it fair to say I was the first, first customer to use it? I would say you're the first customer. I, I was the first customer right, right, out, right out of the box to use the software and brought it to its maximum capabilities, okay? So what, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, sh in a briefly, I'm gonna show you what I, what I did with it, okay? Then we can talk about a little bit of how you can use it. So, so what I did when Todd and I met one day and Spox went flying around when, when Todd was telling me what he could do with the software is DMP has their own app. Who knows what an app is? An app, right? You have an iPhone. We just we just demonstrated an iPhone recently, so you can download an app on iPhone or Android phone, and get the DMP Party Print app free. Okay. Once you download that app with the software, you can now take photos with your iPhone, with your iPad, your mini iPad, your Samsung Galaxy yeah. phone, Android phone, 
Okay, all those, all those devices that you can actually download that app on. Okay, uh, maybe the ones that I didn't mention, the tablets, the, the window tablets, all those devices. You download the app. You want to do it? There you go. Charge can take a photo of me. Turn the flash on. We're photographers. We're photographers. We're gonna turn the flash on. Didn't need it. That's okay. It's all like it's white shirt. It's all great. Available light. It's called available light, right? So download the, download the software, utilize the software, wirelessly print photos, utilizing a DMP printer. Okay. So Todd, I um I just I just downloaded the app on my iPhone as I was talking to you. So let me take a photo of you now. There you go. So so I, I this is my own phone. I just took it on my pocket as Todd was talking. I took took a photo of Todd, and I'm going to use that photo. I logged on to the Potty Print wireless network. We all know how to use our iPhones and log on to that. And uh, we're going to print Facebook quality, Todd. Share that. I would share that one. There you go. So I mean, the prints come out instant and. So a little bit of detail, you know, when I when I met Todd, and he was talking to me that we we, were, we met on a on a actually we were at a Mexican restaurant in, in New England, and they were just launching the software, and we we're talking about it, and I, I actually had to think about it a couple of times of how I could use it because I've I've done so many events, and and actually kind of figured it out, not not that I didn't understand Todd, but I wanted to understand how I could use it in my business, right? And you guys are probably thinking the same way right now. How can I use it the way I do it? Because we all have our different niche markets, right? Some people may do bar mitzvahs, other people may do weddings, I do corporate events. So we're all trying to figure it out. And I kind of figured it out a little bit, okay? So what, what they do is, and I, I modified mine, but what happens is, is they, they, they come up with little directions here, okay? Because what we just said, we're all techie people. We're all kind of into it, right? Guests at a wedding or wherever you are, most, most, most of the time are techie savvy, but you gotta at least tell the top 10 people what you're doing and then, you know, word spreads like wildfire, right? We know how that works, right? It just goes out. So, so I kind of made my own little cheat sheet that I've actually put at the events and I pass them out. Of course, I'm printing it on my DMP printer, of course, right? So we'll, we'll pass it out and we just kind of created this little bullet items to actually explain people. And when I did it at one of my events, as a matter of fact, I launched this in 17 cities across the country. Um, it was the first software came out, and we actually we did this for Verizon at a program at 17 cities around location, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> and it worked, and that's why I'm here today to talk about it more. It worked, and I believe in it. Okay, so what I did is, you know, if, let's let's just pick another scenario. We talk about that portrait scenario. Let's take another scenario. Like I was just like, you know, take a um, take a wedding. I started doing weddings when I was 15, so I can figure it out. I'll talk about that. So, so if you're at a wedding, depending upon the clientele at your wedding, most of these, most of these people are going to have these phones, OK? And w what I did at my event is I had some assistants. And, and my assistants are, uh, the, most of them are college people, OK? And they, they're, they're, like, they're like, ah, OK? And, and I just had them walk around the room and tell people how to log on to the potty print device, okay? We're at the point where I actually had them take their phones, just like I helped you on your phone. I actually had them go to their phones and help them. More people are like, oh yeah, how do I do it? What are you doing? Show me something new, right? Everyone, everybody wants to know how to do something new, okay? And they went to their phones and they actually download the whole app. We, you know, they're like, here you go, you know, and it works, okay? And that's what they did and they helped people out. We gave directions and they passed it out. And before, before you know, within, within an hour, People were taking their photos and actually taking cool photos of everybody <coughs> at the events. And then they were coming up to our photo station where we're doing green screen photos and all the, all the fun stuff. And they were coming back, picking up their photos. And we had the really kind of cool, you know, Jessica and, you know, Matt's little 2005 and all the cool photos. And everybody was coming up, getting their photos, and it would just print. It would just print four by six photos. And, we're just, and everybody was really getting into it to the point where it was like when we had to close the town and people still wanted to print photos and just want, they thought it was really cool because they just wanted that photo and, and shared and we didn't have to have a photographer. We're almost like, we're, we're actually, we're, you know, so many people will go to that and say, oh, there's another photographer there taking photos. Everybody has their own cameras. Why should they hire me? iPhones are great. Why should I, why, why would they need to use me? This is a great opportunity to think outside the box and say, yes, you're right and make sure they bring lots of batteries to keep their phones charged because we want to make sure we're printing photos at the event and the photographers are now the guests, 
okay? And if everybody logs in, guess what? They're gonna print more photos because we actually, there's some really cool features that are built into it where you can actually keep track of the photo counts, how many photos you print, right? So who's into upselling? Anybody? Just nobody? You are? Good. So let's say you cap it out and it's a $4.99 program and you only get a 200 photos. After 200 photos, it's another $3.99. I'm making some numbers up here, right? The software actually keep track of it for you and only print a certain amount of photos. So it's not like you go into an event and you're gonna print you know, 1,200 sheets of paper and you're gonna lose money on it. So you're gonna keep track of that and, you're gonna, and you have tools and you can know, print the report, show them, you know. And you can, you know, so you wanna encourage people to log on to the system. You wanna encourage people to print photos because you have a potential of making another 200, 300, 400, 500. Now, you know, something about two printers, not that this matters for the seminar for everybody else, but I, I did an event not too long ago, and um, I had two printers. But it was a smaller event. I didn't want to load up the print. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't want to load up the paper full of paper and print. Because the software will daisy chain. If one printer is busy, it'll print to the next printer. So some events were it's time and they're paying. I want to push volume out. So I you know I have one hour. I told them I can do two to three hundred photos in that hour, and I and I can't. And I'll put two or three printers, I'll daisy chain them, and they'll all go. And they'll all print instantaneously, okay? But other times, I don't really want to have all that going at the same time. So I'll just have one printer there, don't even put meter in it, media in it, um, and, but just have one, one there ready to roll um, to have at the event. It seems to have a little bit of interest about green screen. Anybody want to see some green screen photos? Yeah. You want to see some of that? Okay. So. This is software I use to run my green screen soft, to do at events, using my DMP printers to print photos, okay? So I will use, I'll use Darkroom software, okay? And I'm assuming that, you know, the front end, we have our, our cameras. Um, the software can read and be tethered to most of the cameras today, all Canon cameras, current to all Nikon cameras. So you can be plugged in USB, is anybody familiar with shooting tethered? Okay, so some of you are. So you could be shoot tethered, USB coming out of the camera. Um, the software, w w the secret sauce of the software is that everything's built into it. You're not building drivers and trying to find things and trying to get things to work. The software as you upgrade has the drivers built in, which makes life easier to make money, right? So. When you, you know, when you first off, you have some caption options, and you can actually, oops, sorry, you can actually, you can see all the cameras that it's familiar with. So whatever camera you may be, you may have, you <laughs> simply just check the box, and uh, you plug it in, and as soon as you take a photo, it is going to be pop up immediately in your software, which is the secret sauce because if you're going to do an event, and you got to print a photo in a minute. Um, it's not something that you want to take a card out and put it in and try to do that process, right? We, you got to make it simple. So you tab it, it works. You're an event. Um, this is an actual event. The photos come up in our film strip, which is in here as you're taking it. And um, this is an outside event, so you got a lot of shadows, light, sun's coming in there. Um, but it's a great example to show you because a lot of people, um, without getting too tactical and some of the lighting, a lot of people are really nervous about taking green screen photos. They think they need it to be perfect lighted. And yes, it does need to be good, but again, it's not brain surgery. So two lights outside and with some software, there's a lot of what we call latitude and adjustments in making that all work, okay? So on this particular case, um, two lights with a green screen, tethered, pops up in a second, click, there it is. Um, big question on backgrounds and which backgrounds and which themes. You can simply just change, change your different backgrounds. Um, use one of my favorites. And you can actually move people around and change that. And as you can see, we all saw that, that, that really deep shadow in the background. We all see that? I'll take it off and show it again. So a lot of people say it wouldn't work. And you can actually see her shadow there, right? With the sun coming down, right? It's, it's not the perfect green screen shot. I'm not gonna kid you, it's not. Um, but with, you know, with, with the right software and, and the background, 
and there's many different backgrounds. You can simply create your own within two clicks, okay? And you can add those backgrounds. Do the green screen. Do you need Photoshop with this? You do not need Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop's a great tool to design those different backgrounds when yeah. you need to do it. Uh, with this particular software to print, you know, to print, to print photos, so that's how we make money, right? Um, you do not. Uh, this was simple, a photo I've taken of Boston uh, just a day or two before the event, um, and then I was able to um, sit up, do a green screen shoot, sit up to my DMP printers, two, almost back up, and then, and then print a photo. So part of that whole, that whole, the, whole, the whole secret sauce is package printing, right? You may offer 4x6s or 8x10s or 5x7s. So depending on what printer you have, you can actually, um, you can actually develop that and, and print those packages. So you're, you know, you're right there, you got your packages, and you can, you can print it easily. So how many, how many would you like? And then print it out and print it. Um, I mean, it, it, it's kind of this, this cut-down version of, of how the process event works. Um, but the key thing is, is taking a photo and printing it for your clients, and how fast can you print it, right? Sure. So, so we use an 8x10 printer. We talked about um, setup. So what we're going to do is um, we use, let's say we just, we just bought a DMP80, and we're doing two 5x7s. Um, and we're doing a golf photos with their horizontal or vertical, it wouldn't matter. Um, so what I'll do is, this is gonna print out. So I'm gonna set up that package. And once you set up a package, it's, it's, it's always there. It's not something that you, you have to do all the time. Uh, most of my packages are usually set up. Uh, so I will go to my package options. Um, I know my printer's working, by the way. Here's all the different printers that I'll use. And then, um, oops, I know that's gonna fall on the floor. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Check that out. So not, around. not finished, by the way. You can check that out when it hits the back of the room. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Packages. And we will go to um, Package Groups. And we're going to go back to our 8x10 again. And let's just change this one because we're probably not going to do that one again. So we're going to remove that item. And then we're going to add um, 8x10s. Um, but let's do 8x10 combinations. Well, we'll do 8x10s. Like, I said we're going to do um, two five by sevens. Oh, right here. And we're going to print one, 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 one unit, right? So we're going to set that up. And we're going to hit OK. And so package two is now set up to print two five by sevens. And you can see on the brackets for an eight by 10 printer. OK? So we'll go back over here. Um, and let's change the aspect ratio to five by seven so that we kind of know um, what we're printing. So the view mode is five by seven, right? And so we want to print two five by seven. So the package is set up. We're going to print one. It's in our shopping cart, and we are going to place that order. We simply just so now every time we need to print a package, two five by sevens. We're just going to print it. Boom, boom, boom. Done. We're going to print it. We're going to get it out. So, so here's a good question. Actually, I don't do this. I should do this. So I have an 8x10 printer there, and I have a 5x7 printer there. So if you want to do package printing, you can print the 8x10s, and then use your other paper for all the 5x7s, right? And in the software, you, it's going to identify which printer can print what, you know? Um, doo -doo -doo. So let's go, to, let's go to our printer options, right? So um, that was our 80. So we're going to do, we're just going to, we're going to refresh it and, um, Oh, look, it found, our, it found our 40. So it found our 40, and um, it's going to cut the paper. It's on gloss, but, <clears throat> but we're going to do matte. Gloss. Keep gloss. You like gloss? Yeah. I never switch it to matte. So here we go. So, so we have 6 by 8 meter in there, media in there, as we can see. OK? Which is really kind of important to know when you're setting up the packages, you know, because you can buy 5 by 7 media. You can buy 4 by 6 media. So if you're trying to set up a package uh, for an 8x10, you got 6x8 paper in there, vice versa, it's not, not going to print. So it's really important to know what size printer in there. Not that I've ever done that. All right, so go back to our, our um, packages. And uh, so we'll go to our 5x7s. 
And see, you see that bracket again, it says five by seven, but we have six, six by eight meteor now. So that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move, move that item and we are gonna add a package. So this is all what we call six inch of paper, right Todd? Yep. So six inch paper, these are all the combinations of packages we can print, right? So we can even print a six by 40. Mm -hmm. Um, we can print all these different, all these different combinations. Not that it actually supports it on that. But let's go to six by eight prints. So six by eight. These are all brackets in six by eight. So here's a six by eight photo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna add. Let's add another. Um, let's add another print to this whole package, right? And what do you think? Four by six, Todd. Two four by six. So two point. So let's do. Uh, Let's do one of those, and let's add another package uh, right here, right? Uh, let's go two. It's not my paper. So, okay, so that's my package one, right? And uh, now that was already in there, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear that order, right? And um, so, um, and now we'll go to our five by seven packages. So you can hot swap between packages, so you don't have to like redesign this every time. Once you have it all set up, you pretty much never really change it. And then you can go. So there's all of our packages. You're gonna see what it's gonna print. And there's some other cool features in there before you actually go to hit enter. You can actually change the quantity. You can see that times two. You can actually change the format, five by seven, eight by 10 size. So there's some really kind of cool tools before you go to print it. It has to be the same picture? No. No, actually, uh, you can actually drag different, different you, can actually, you can actually change it. So there's options in there. Um, what we do is more of that, so it's usually one, 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 print, print, print. So you could actually have this package that we just developed and actually drag different photos into that package. And we can place that order. Great, great feature for like Santa, Santa events, right? The eight by tens and the four by six and the, the twenty nine ninety five Santa package with the Santa photo and you know, and then you know your software is in presentation mode, so the customer sees that you're on the other side, selling a hundred dollar order with three dollars worth of paper, and there we go. So that's a six by eight. A lot of the Santa locations will do six by eight. Is that right, Mark? Six by eight. If you, if you had Santa, if you had your Santa photo taken recently, have you? Anybody? Had your Santa photo taken? You can actually, um, you, you'll notice in the malls, this is the size they're printing. Right here. And then the four by sixes. Five by seven with a coupon. <laughs> Want to pass them out. Take a look at them. So green screen event, package printing, right? How long that take? Now, if you had one printer, two printers, or even three printers, <coughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even think. I think if you had three printers, I don't even think it would actually hit the third printer on the print on the print spool. I think it would already be you know, it would already be printing. Um, versus years ago, you needed. <laughs> Four, you know, four or five printers. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.